Uh, marriage and medicine. Finally, right? Part one and part two. Uh, I don't really know what part three is going to give. Um, but we're going to see what it gives, child. Um, okay. Marriage and medicine. Now look. I already did my looks review on my uh, community tab. Make sure you guys check it out for all the looks. And all the nine, right? Okay. So, I, my worst stress to me was Toya. I didn't like it. None of it. Um, my top three was number three, Dr. Heavenly. Number two, Dr. Alicia. And number one was Phaedra Parks. And everybody else fell where they fell, right? All right. Um, let me see. Okay, so what was the first thing they talked about, child? You know, one thing I found interesting was <laughs> this is Phaedra. Well, clearly fashion is not these ladies' strong suit necessarily, except for maybe Quad and Toya. She gets it right sometimes. Quad and Toya mainly. But the other ladies, it's just like, you know, kind of hit and miss. They, everybody always looks nice, but they're not like, you could tell the girls that are fashion girls, you know. And it's not necessarily on this cast. But Phaedra is a fashion girl. You know, at least, you know, for her, for her and her body type. Um, so, you know, Phaedra came on there. This is her very first season on the show. She outdid all the girls easily. I did, it, it wasn't a problem for her, clearly. Um, so let me see. So Dr. Alicia, she wasn't out there until later on, right? So it was, um, on this couch, we had Dr. Simone, Toya, and Sweet Tea. And on this couch, we had Dr. Jackie, Dr. Heavenly, um, Phaedra, and Quad. They put Quad all the way on the end, which I thought was shady. But hey, um, let me see. You know, they got into the whole thing about Phaedra. Allegedly lying about the um, thing with sleep, sleeping allegedly, not sleeping with, but having a situation ship with Dr. G and um, her allegedly asking Dr. G for 4000 or whatever. Um, apparently, Quad, she said that he said it. Sweet T even said that, she, that he said it. Um, and even later on in the um, segment with the guys, Dr. G said, yeah, it was true. She said that he said that. Phaedra said that she don't want to be with nobody that can't supply the lifestyle that she can supply for herself or more. And I was just like, well, he said he didn't have it at the time. I'm not, he probably got it at this time, but he not going to give up no money. Dr. G give me stingy down, you know. So, I mean, we're going to see what it gives, child. Let me see. What else is going on? Um, Phaedra and Quad. Quad felt like Phaedra was going along to get along. She was. Um, Quad felt like she didn't appreciate the fact that Phaedra lied, talking about she was going to get medicine. When Toya revealed that Phaedra just said she didn't want to be a part of the whole Quad situation, she didn't want to, um, you know, go down with the Titanic, as she said, with the sinking ship. From Phaedra's perspective, I can understand that too. You're new to the show, you're not trying to create enemies. You know, necessarily, it's like you just got there, and it's just like I don't, want, I don't want no mess with y'all like that, just by in association with Quad. But they did judge it up and make it seem like Quad and Phaedra was like this, right? Um, but Phaedra clearly said they have a, a social relationship, like it's you know, hey girl, bye girl. You know, they go out maybe every so often, a couple of times, once or twice a year, but the, it ain't nothing serious. But Phaedra strikes me as the type this Phaedra's for Phaedra. Let's just keep it real. She's not really for, I don't think she's really necessarily friends with anybody. I feel like she likes all of them. They're like social friends, but I don't think she, I don't think anybody in this reality world is Phaedra's real life friend friend like that. Just my opinion. Okay. So uh, wouldn't it be funny if Phaedra goes right back to Real Housewives of Atlanta? And she literally just came on here, not married to medicine, not being medicine, not anything associated with medicine. Came on here, got a check, played the girls. They let her skate by the soul season and she go right back to housewives. Wouldn't that be something? That child, that's a boss move. I tell you, y'all can't blame them, but nobody but yourself. But y'all wanted to beat Quad up. Quad was the target. But child. Anyway, um, 
Let me see. Let me see what else is going on. Heavenly, she looks so pretty. I was like, go, Heavenly, go. She's been looking better and better. She looked great. Just very natural. Um, let me see. You know, they got on Toya segment. I didn't like Andy asking Toya, when did you get such grand taste? Where did you grow up? Like, who are you? It was giving little black girl. Who the hell you think you is? That's what it was giving. Um, and I didn't like Andy giving that. Um, but whatever. Um, she was just like, look, I, I got picked on a lot when I was younger because I had cheap clothing and stuff, cheap shoes, and I just wanted better for myself. Or... Um, I just wanted more expensive things as I grew older, and, and that's that's what she gave. So, like, okay, Toya Child. Uh, Dr. Jackie and her segment, they skated over the entire thing with Dr. Jackie. I was just like, what am I watching? She literally was like, oh, if um, the fact that those words that I said in the YouTube video with Dr. Heavenly, those words that I said, the fact that it kind of erased um, everything that I did and all the work I've done for black women and blah, blah, blah. Never not one time did she say I'm so sorry for hurting nobody and then like that. She kind of said it on the video, but it was real just like, you know, brief and uh, minuscule. And I said, child, and then everybody holding her hand, rallying around Jackie and then whoop to whoop. Then they somehow flipped it on Quad. Andy asked, oh, but did you hear from Quad? She was just like, no, I didn't hear from Quad. Quad said she was going through her own stuff. And um, she reached out to Dr. Heavenly. And um, Dr. Heavenly suggested that Quad not reach out to Dr. Jackie. Because it's been it was going around the group that Dr. Jackie resurfaced the video. I mean, that, that Quad resurfaced the video about Dr. Jackie. And I'm just like... Don't y'all know anybody can do that? Can bring that clip back up? Like, we have social media. We have computer savvy people. It don't take... And then the video's still up, so it don't take nothing to go back and resurface that clip. Why would y'all think Quad would want to do it out of all people? As if y'all haven't been knowing that girl for 20, 30 years. How long y'all been knowing her? I'm just like, damn, they think lower Quad, don't they? Now, look. As in, I've never disagreed necessarily with what they had to say about quad. I believe the quad don't answer texts. I believe the quad is about quad. I believe the quad is distant from them. I believe all that stuff about quad. I do. You know, but it's just the fact that how they did it with her on this show. You know, and, and, and y'all could have texted her. Y'all could have called her on Peachtree Street in Atlanta. Y'all could have met at the McDonald's. It's a thousand McDonald's. Y'all could have met at the McDonald's on the corner and said, well, we want to put you out the group. Why did you invite her on the trip? Just to be rude to her. Just for y'all to go around the table and get her told. And then, just when she get ready to go to bed, call her back up, stick back where y'all at and say, we want you to leave now. Who does all that? That was my main issue with the thing. I said, child... You can send me a text and say, well, you don't want to be friends no more. Yeah. Um, so they went through that and I was just like, Lord, so now y'all flipping it on Quad. Um, Quad, she apologized. She was just like, I apologize to Toya because I should not have repeated what Anila said. Um, she said, I acknowledge my wrongness. Um, and Toya was just like, it's convenient. She apologized. Now we're going to see how she acts later on. I said, child. Um, they mad at Quad because Quad said she was here for the check. Aren't we all? <laughs> um, let me see. Quad said she didn't want to reach out to Toya because she don't know she didn't like her. And Quad was just like, well, you still should have reached out. So they basically said that you could treat me any kind of way, but you're still supposed to keep trying to be my friend pretty much. Um, let me see. Um, Dr. Simone, she brought up this whole thing of um, apparently, um, Quad, she had this really horrible incident where her, um, niece or great niece was perished in her, um, her pool and stuff. And it was just, uh, it was really ugly. I, I didn't like that Dr. Simone brought that up. Andy asked, he was just like, what happened? But uh, that's just, you know, 
and so many other people involved in that situation. It's not just Quad, it's her family members, whoever the little girl's parents is, and it's just what a horrible thing. And I'm praying for Quad and her family. That that's something you'll never get over. And and you know, for Doctor um, Simone to use that, it, it's just and Quad was just like Simone, don't do that, don't do that. She could have just left it at it was just a horrible tragedy, a, a death or whatever. She could she didn't have to go all into detail and say all that. So, in my opinion, Dr. Simone should apologize to Miss Quad for that. That was just too much. And who wants to relive that? And then to just tell the world that it's just like, when I'm sure there's plenty of stuff, Dr. Simone, um, not as it pertains to Quad, but just in general, I'm sure everybody has stuff they don't want the public to know. And to just expose that it um, just so freely and, and, and um, I just didn't like that, Dr. Simone. Her ugly dress. I did not like Dr. Simone's dress. I thought I thought she looked pretty. I liked her hair and makeup, but her dress, that origami, I don't know what it, it was, the flowers, and she just looked huge. And Dr. Simone is like this big. I didn't like it. And Dr. Simone next to Toya was my worst dress. Um. So anyway, after that, they broke for lunch. Quad and um, Dr. Jackie talked, and she was just like, I just can't believe that you thought that about me. Um, Dr. Jackie, you thought I had something to do with that. Like, I would never do that to you, Jackie. And um, Dr. Jackie was just like, it's just my headspace, Quad. I was in a bad headspace and, and stuff like that. And, you know, um, I just didn't know what to think. We're not included in your life. And, um, you know, we just need to do better and blah, blah, blah. And look, like I said, I agree. I believe everything they say about Quad. I do. But it's just the way that things were done, which is... It was nasty. It was nasty work, girl. Mean girl behavior. It's giving Quad's apology tour. That's probably what I'm going to name this review. Um, Quad went to Simone's dressing room and talked to her and they hugged it out or whatever. We see the men come in. They're having throwback clips the entire time. They had a throwback clip of Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Jackie going back and forth when when Heavenly first got on the show, I think it was season two, and, um, you know, they had got into it about who's a real doctor, a dentist is not a real doctor, Dr. Jackie, and blah, blah, blah. And it was just interesting to see the dynamic now and, and to think that Dr. Jackie thought so low of Heavenly at the beginning, and she still secretly do, because um, it was talking about Kamala Harris and Dr. Jackie was invited to a game that Kamala Harris, um, it was in association with her um, college or whatever football team situation. Um, and and uh, Dr. Heavenly, I guess, was supposed to get an invite and Dr. Jackie never invited her child. <sighs> Dr. Jackie know what time it is with you, Dr. Heavenly. She's not going to invite you everywhere, girl. Um, so let me see. We get the Heavenly versus Sweet Tea. You know, I actually felt bad for Sweet Tea. Sweet Tea's dress was also up ugly, um, but she looked pretty. But, um, you know, I think that Sweet Tea genuinely thought that she had a friend. Dr. G did not school her on the arts of reality television um, because he hasn't been on there for years. And, you know, it's just a different dynamic with the women and the men. Um, the women, the men don't get paid on the show, so they care a little less. And, and stuff, and they don't have to give as much as the women because it's based around the women. But um, I think she thought that she had a friend in Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly champion for her to be on the show. And, and you know, she got comfortable, too comfortable with her. And Dr. Heavenly used that against her. I don't care what Dr. Heavenly said. She said that she, you know, signed her up for Dr. Heavenly University. And she tried to help her out after hearing her story. And also knowing what Quad went through with Dr. G. And she just, she heard some of the same stuff coming from Sweet Tea. Um, and she just wanted to help her and blah, blah, blah. But Dr. Heavenly, we're not, we know you, girl. Cut it out. Um, and, and so, you know, Dr. Heavenly, she's great. She has a lot of great qualities. I think she's hilarious. Um, but she does tend to take things too far and she does, she is, strikes me as one of those people that sometimes when she does something nice for you, she'll throw it back up in your face when she feel like it. Um, but Doc, Sweet Tea, she didn't know any of that about Dr. Heavenly. So, yeah, it was kind of going back and forth. Dr. Heavenly thanked Sweet Tea because, um, that live that they did when it was Phaedra, Toya, 
heavenly sweet tea and Dr. Alicia. Um, when they got into it real bad, sweet tea and Dr. Heavenly. Um, she said, your mama's in hell. Um, she said because of that, her sweet sister reached out to her and now they're talking more and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, Heavenly, I see you trying to flip that thing. I was like, okay, girl. Um, it was a mess. Uh, but sweet tea, she gonna be all right. She gonna be all right. I don't think um, her and Dr. Heavenly gonna get into it like that. It was interesting. Um, for whatever reason, Dr. Heavenly feels like her relationship is off limits when everybody else is, is on the limit. It's fine completely. She feels like her and Dr. Um, Damon is, um, you know, you can't talk about their marriage and stuff. And so she gets super mad and, and stuff. And, oh, this is why we don't deal with the doctor's wives because they don't have nothing to lose. And I'm not going to play with you, little girl, even though you say all this stuff. And they're just supposed to just, I guess, just let it go and still be your friend, Dr. Heavenly. I don't understand that from her. We got Dr. Damon asking Dr. G, do you, th I've been knowing this guy for 10 years. You think I'm a cheater? No, let me know if you think I'm a cheater. Dr. G was just like, I don't know what people do in their spare time. I don't see you every day. We don't talk on the phone. I don't know nothing about you. Nah, but you've been knowing me for 10 years. If you think I'm a cheater, say it. Get down, trying to intimidate him. And then we got weak Cecil and weak Curtis, that ostrich, sitting there. Oh, that sounded a little invasive, um, Gregory. Just answer the question. Just answer the question. I said, look at these two. I said, child, is all y'all scared of Dr. Damon? Oh, infamil drinking self. I said, child, please look at you and Curtis. Knock knees, you are the last one to say anything about anything. Dr. Curtis, you should Curtis, you should have sat there and shut up and not said nothing about nothing. All the stuff that you done did and do. Please, Curtis. I said the cocky. That's why I'm like, Curtis is cocky. It's all get out. Him and Dr. Jackie. Child, please. Um, so and Dr. G, he was just like, nah, I don't think you cheat. Child. Who cares? Who cares at the end of the day? Um, the point is, is that if you come for me and mine, I'm going to come for yours. Simple. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm -hmm. Quad, it don't look good. You making fun of Sweet Tea over everybody else. We expect certain stuff from the other cast members, but um, you making fun of Sweet Tea and um, it, it just makes you look bitter and jealous. The bitter, jealous ex. I don't think that's the case, but that's how it looks. And you need to stop it, Miss Quad. Um, it don't look good on Sweet Tea's behalf that Buffy and Mariah is coaching her, apparently. Uh, Buffy Purcell, Auntie Buffy on YouTube and Mariah Hub, executive producer of the show, creator of the show, also used to be a cast member of the show. They also, they review this, um, his last two reunions and Mariah revealed that Buffy is helping Sweet Tea along on this show. Um, and I just felt like that was a misstep on Mariah's half. I don't think she meant to say that, but um, it came out and I was just like, ugh. It's just not looking good. It's not, um, cause it's just, it just seems like everything that Sweet Tea is gonna say is, is what Buffy or Mariah will say now. And it's just like, girl, is, is this you or is it them, you know? You always want to be come up with your own reads and your own stuff, but maybe Sweet Tea just ain't got it, child. But you know, like I said, I feel like Sweet Tea Phyllis was really hurt because she thought she probably looked up to these women and thought a certain way about them, and then she got on the show and realized they are just as messy as everybody else with white coats on, you know. Um, Dr. Alicia, you know, they, they brought her out. She stood up for her husband, her man, which is what she'd been doing the whole time. Um, I think she's so pretty, Dr. Alicia. Um, it's interesting how behind the scenes, all the ladies are coming at Dr. Alicia about Dr. Kingman, the outlandish, ridiculous stuff that he says. Like I said, I don't agree with nothing, half of nothing he says, but, um, he is giving the men a storyline and he's an independent thinker and he, he's outspoken and, we can't do nothing but appreciate that on a reality show. I think that Dr. Alicia's no fool and that money that she can't seem to find, that 150000 Dr. Alicia's smart. I think she's stacking up her coins. And as the years go by, she's going to continue to be missing 150000 And, and she, she's setting up um, herself to possibly be straight to leave him. I promise you. Because if he's like this in public, what is he like at home? 
a person can only take so much. I like Dr. Kima. Like I said, I think he's handsome and there's something very charming about him. Um, and a part of me feels like he's putting on a little bit for the cameras. But I do feel like that's actually him and he believes this, this stuff. Um, and, and so Dr. Leash is completely different in my mind. I think that she's, she's obliging him for right now. But watch and see, child. And Dr. Leisha, she's something slick. I see her. Uh, let me see. What else is going on? We get on the infamil. Apparently, Daddy, um, Dr. Damon, he can't, he's allergic to milk. So, infamil's the only thing that don't bother him. Isn't it different kinds of milk? Oat milk and goat milk and, and cow milk and hell, my milk. And everything else. Like, I just... Aren't there other options? Almond milk and... Whatever. Um, let me see. Let me see. Is it everything? I think that was it, y'all. Yeah, I think that was it. I think I talked about everything. And then um, on the third part, Apollo is coming. He's going to be a part of the show. Which I feel like is silly to me. Uh, there's no need for Apollo to be there. Apollo's just showing up to look like the good dad. Um, when, uh, which I'm not saying he's not a bad dad. I'm sure he's there for the kids, but Phage was definitely there more. It's, that's clear. Um, and I just, I don't understand why he's there. Besides eye candy. Besides to defend himself against Phaedra and anything she said about the boys. And um, for just, uh, Phaedra's giving us a storyline. You know, and, and she's giving us something to do to talk about. Um, regarding her at the reunion um, because she didn't give nothing all season. That's that's all it is. It's just it's giving opportunists on both of their parts. But we'll see what it gives, child. Part three is coming on this Sunday and I give it to y'all when I can. I'm out of the job, but I do have an interview tomorrow. So we'll see what it gives, child. But still doing a lot. Still doing a lot. Pray for me um, in every which way. I'm a little bit stressed. Went to the dermatologist. The kid's hair is falling out back here. Uh, make sure you guys go to my Facebook, Chase King. You'll see the post about it. I may post it in here, but I don't know. Anyway, I love you guys. And uh, stay tuned for much more. Potomac, uh, Miami, Love and Hip Hop, all the things. Um, what? Mama June, uh, um, Bold and Bougie, all the things. With that said, I'm Mr. Chilaki. Mr. Chilaki on Google Plus. Follow me. At Iskinsworth on Instagram and Twitter. At Iskinsworth 89 on Snapchat. Chase King on Facebook. Mr. Chilaki on Cash App and PayPal. And as always, run me my money or run me my fade. Run me my money the way I get paid. Stay black, stay tuned. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>